So Prolo Quota Go is fairly easy to personalize and make specific to the child um, that you are working with. So one of the big things I always like to say is um, make sure not to change the home page. This is the home page. You'll see that it has a lot of core words, what we call core words, and those are words that are used at a higher frequency throughout the day, and so they make it really easily accessible on the home page. But you'll also see some folders. So in the bottom um, couple lines, you'll see some folders like fun, things, food, all of those. Those are more um, for you to personalize and make really, really, really specific to the child. So um, it really depends on where you wanna get started. I really like to make sure that I ask the family what's most important to them, what's the most important to the child. A lot of the times I really like to start with um, people, food, or toys. If you're doing something more general like food and toys, always make sure to use the search function. Um, and the search function is going to be in the bottom column, or not in the bottom column, in the bottom row you'll see a, um, a bunch of different tools. Um, so there's like one that's four different square boxes. So in the bottom left hand side you press on that and a little tools pop up comes up. So you want to make sure to use the search feature before you program anything that might already be there. You'll see that I have searched for different toys and food options. So for example, let me look up um, a pretty kid-friendly um, food item, chicken nuggets. And so you'll see it gives you some ideas and chicken nuggets is already in the system so you don't have to program that. So um, to make sure that you know where it is, you can click on chicken nuggets and it will actually guide you there. And so I always like to use the easiest um, way to get there. And so that seems to be the first one. So when you click on food, chicken nuggets, chicken is nuggets right there. So you don't have to program that in there. It's already there for you. Then you go back to home. So you know chicken nuggets is in there. But for example, you're going to know that real pictures of family members are not going to be programmed into the general version of Proloquo to go. And so that's something I always like to get started with. And again, you only use real pictures um, when it comes to personal things for the child. So that might be personal people, favorite people, and very specific toys that might not exist um, as a line drawing, like a teddy bear they named um, George, and it's a very specific teddy bear, stuff like that. Um, but more general things like a place like Target or just a general toy like blocks, even if they have favorite blocks, you want to leave as the line drawing just so that they get used to different versions of blocks in all different kinds of environments and not just theirs. So when you go to people, it's in the, co the first column on the left-hand side of the page, you'll see that there are general people um, already in here with the line drawings. I might leave the line drawings alone just so that in the future that they, they can use those buttons to talk about other people's parents or grandparents or something like that. Um, and so I might really look into programming a separate button for their real people, including their teachers and stuff like that. And so you'll see that right next to all of the um, general people, there's little, a little folder on the right-hand side for family, friends, and teachers. That's most likely where I would program those people. So for family, I might click on the family folder. And so you'll see that it does change um, to just general buttons. So in this case, I would just edit the buttons, but if you go back to general people, these ones I might leave alone so they in the future can talk about other people's you know, brother, sister, all that. So when you go to family, um, I'm going to edit those buttons to be my personal family. Um, same thing with teachers. You can go to the teachers folder and put your different teachers in there, whether it's a speech teacher or whatever it might be. Um, but I would leave the general buttons alone and add real buttons under there. So for family, I'm going to go to the pencil in the bottom of the page right next to the gear in the right hand side. And I am gonna make a new button and, or not, I'm not gonna make a new button, I'm just gonna edit the button um, because mom and dad are in the other page as well. So you'll see that mom is mother, which I don't see a lot of people using that very fancy version of mom. And so my specific child might say mama instead. So I'm gonna click on mother and so you'll see you can now, um, has a little check mark and you can now edit that button. So in the bottom column, I don't know why I keep calling it a column, in the bottom row, um, 
that feature hasn't naturally popped up. So if, you, if it doesn't naturally do that, you go to the bottom left-hand corner and there's a little arrow um, that points up. You press on it and it will bring it up. And so now you can edit this button. So I'm going to change what it says to mama, just because that's what my um, family calls their mom. And I'm going to go right under the picture. I'm going to edit the picture because I don't want just a general line drawing. I'm going to choose a picture. I'm not going to take a picture because I don't have a mom here with me, but let's say they sent me the picture. So it's going to go from my photo library. I don't have any real pictures right now, so pretend this is a real picture of a person. But I'm going to go to this drawing I have and pretend this is a real picture and I get to crop it and make it really zoomed in on the face. And when I'm ready in the in the right hand corner right next to the picture it says use and I'm going to use that picture right now it says mama in the top right hand corner I'm going to click done mama and now mama is programmed in there and so you can do this with the rest of the family members when you go to people what I meant by adding a new button so maybe not people under teachers um, for this example, um, I'd, just in case they want to just talk about a general person, I wouldn't program over the buttons that already exist. But if you go to the pencil in the bottom left hand corner, um, that's when you would add a button, which is that little plus sign with a blank button. Um, so you can add a button and put, you know, teacher Sarah. And that's where I would put, um, choose a picture. And that's where I would put a picture of a teacher. So let's pretend that this is teacher Sarah and that's a real picture when you click done now teacher Sarah teacher Sarah, Sarah. and also a general teacher um, is also there just in case they want to talk about someone in general so um, in other situations I would just use line drawings um, just make sure to search ahead of time so if you go to fun and toys You'll see that it has general toys in here. I would go in there and add some of those favorite toys that don't already exist in there, going to the pencil and just adding buttons. And you'll see you can search really anything and add a picture and choose a symbol and really search through the symbol basis. Um, so like a shape, sorter, is not there yet, but it now can be there and so a shape sorter is now there and you'll see the one big thing I forgot to mention is that you'll see that the buttons are also um, color coded so all of these nouns are yellow and so the other button that I had programmed automatically was yellow and that's because it recognized it was a person but for some reason this one is not recognized as anything yet so um, in the left hand um, side of this little pop-up that comes up when you're programming the button you scroll down and go under language to word kind right now it's unidentified and so when you click on that it gives you different options if it was an adverb it changes the color to blue but right now or if you, another example is if it's a question it would just change it to this grayish color but it's a noun and a thing and so now you programmed it as that and now it turns yellow in the top right hand corner corner you press done and now you have shape sorter shape sorter already programmed in there the only other personalizations that um that i would make is possibly the background color and so if you just go to options which is just that gear in the bottom left hand corner you can see that there is different options within here um, including the appearance so um you can you can see you can go through and play around with this but for appearance you'll see that there's different options to edit um, under view I would go to advanced options and you'll see that you can change the background color I always like making the background behind the buttons black um, so now they're black it just stands out a little more so that's another personalization that you can make if that doesn't help the student totally change it back to whatever you would like or leave it alone and you can see that you can also change the skin tone so right now it's light, but you can change it. And so all the buttons will now have a um, darker skin tone depending on the student you're working with. And that's a really fun one to play with to make it more personal to the student. But those are the main ways to personalize um, Prolicota Go to make it more specific for the child.